So the book is named The Obsession, and uh, I read this novel and finished it about two days ago. So I wanted to explain it for any of you who are looking to read it, and for my father as well. If you want a synopsis, then this book starts with a girl named Delilah who goes to a school named Draycott Academy, and there's also this a guy named Logan who is very troubled after his past lover, uh, or uh, his past lover, uh, who he was obsessed over, died after a drug overdose. He's found somebody who he thinks is right for him. And throughout the story, he has illusions and hallucinations of Sophie who tell him to do something else. Sophie was the name of his past love. So Delilah's uh, <clears throat> father actually died in an oil accident and her mother basically gave up so she didn't want to really do anything anymore and so her life was basically fully controlled by the detective brandon jackson of the police force now detective jackson wasn't of uh, the real police force in fact he was very brutal against the uh, fa- against the family of delilah and Delilah can't even talk to anybody at school because otherwise Brandon will give her a beating. So she hates Brandon with all this fiery energy for uh, making uh, for subduing her mother and making her just <clears throat> a subordinate to him for, uh, and abusing her. She wants to put her family back together for real, and she. <clears throat> And while she is out on a mission to get something for Brandon, she stumbles into Logan, who has been searching for details on her all around the internet and been looking up things about her to stalk her. He basically hides in the woods, and then when Delilah stumbles upon him, he says hi and induces some small talk. And while the small talk is happening, we get a small view of Logan's perspective. In fact, the book constantly switches between the perspective of Delilah and Logan. So, uh, Logan, uh, after uh, that whole small talk thing, Logan uh, feels great, but also like he's messed it up somehow, and he uh, wants a good first impression. In fact, uh, she had talked to him about uh, how her father had died and how Detective Brandon was doing bad things. So he uh, said, I, uh, he basically thought, I need to protect her from all this. I need to be her savior, her guardian, somehow. He basically looks for her uh, everywhere, uh, tries to get more information about her, even stumbles upon her at house and spies on her. While Delilah co- comes back home, she is basically infuriated by the thought of Detective Jackson uh, after a whole incident happens when the, uh, she reveals that she talked to Logan. And then uh, she uh, gets into the car and uh, accidentally runs Brandon over. Well, it wasn't an accident. She intentionally ran Brandon over in a fit of rage. Then she felt like some sort of sinking feeling in her, and she was praying that nobody, nobody in mankind had seen her do that kind of stuff. However, in reality, Logan had stumbled upon her house, and he had got a special videotape of that recording that that he would keep uh, in a necklace uh, locked in a very secret USB drive. So, she basically shudders when she gets out of the car. And she's like, oh no, oh no, I just murdered somebody. So, she immediately calls 911. And she, uh, out of her desperation to not get locked up, she uh, says to Detective Mendez, another person in the police force, police force, which we will get to later in the story, uh, so she sa- uh, says uh, it was an accident. Uh, detective, uh, the car just 
somehow randomly turned on, and Detective Brandon got run over. She, uh, she was like so scared that um, Detective Mendez would see a subtle fear in her and then suspect what had been going on. Her heart was basically pounding, uh, but eventually she figures it's all fine. Uh, still, she's like, oh no, oh god. And while her uh, her mom admits, uh, well, I didn't really like Detective Jackson that much anyway. She, I, uh, he knew, well, she knew that her mom would hate her if he, if he ever revealed that she killed Brandon Jackson. Perhaps her mom would even like to see her behind bars. So. Uh, uh, she goes to uh, her own room to ponder the entire thing happening. Uh, and she uh, eventually remembers all of her university applications, uh, the National University of Singapore for one. And then that brings us to Logan, who's been research, uh, who now, from the knowledge he gained from the, that whole small talk thing, is aiming to get into the National University of Singapore so that he can stalk her there and learn more information about her. And then, uh, Delilah <coughs> thinks, well, at this point in the story, Delilah found out about how Logan was kind of blackmailing her. So she found out that Logan has these tapes. How? Well, basically, Logan calls her up while she's trying to talk to a friend and uh, named Isa. So uh, Logan calls her up and says, okay, <clears throat> Can we go on a date together? And Lila says, he uh, says no, but her mom convinces her to say yes. So on the date together, they go to a cliff and through an obstacle course uh, through, with a car, and uh, they say uh, they that they are satisfied with themselves after nearly dying by falling from a cliff. However. Once the whole thing is done and over with, she says, I didn't really like you that much at all anyway. And then Logan reveals to her that he has a very special uh, videotape that he can use to blackmail her and get her behind bars at any time if she tries to resist his love. Now Delilah is stuck, uh, stuck between a rock and a hard place. So if she accepts Logan, which she really doesn't want to, she'll fall into an unneeded love and probably uh, go be, become suicidal and end up like Sophie did uh, earlier in the story. Right. Or if she tries uh, to betray Logan and get her, him out of her life, then Logan will go and blackmail her, which will cause her to uh, go behind bars. So now that means that she has no choice but to pretend that she uh, like being nice around uh, Logan. So. Uh, eventually, after a long amount of events, uh, they come to the park together at a river. And uh, there, she's uh, been plotting to drown him for a long time. So, uh, Earl, uh, she actually works for this uh, librarian, who's actually also a drug seller at uh, her school, named Linda. Linda says to her to keep completely quiet about all her stuff. And then... Delilah takes just a little bit of the drugs that she's been selling and puts them into baked cupcakes so that she can uh, get them to uh, uh, get Logan to eat them and then uh, get Logan to be woozy so that she can push him out of her li her life literally. Delilah uh, sends Logan the muffin uh, the muffins and cookies. And they go to the park together uh, by a river uh, and eat there together. And then once Logan uh, feels a little woozy, she pushes him into the river and decides to drown him. Uh, drown him there, holding him under the water so that uh, he would die. She didn't, uh, she didn't intend to drown him, only basically teach him a lesson. 
But now she realized that he, he has two murders on her hands. And that's where the book concludes.